All right, we are gonna read chapter 22 of Sparrow Hawk Red. So this is kind of the action-packed part of the story. Chapter 22, flies buzzing around his face annoyed Ricky. Sweat rolled down his forehead and stung his eyes. Still, he waited and listened. More joking and gruff talk drifted from the big equipment shed. A small argument erupted over the food. Ricky heard cans popping open. <clears throat> he had no idea what the men were drinking. Paper wrinkled, hungry grunts and full-mouthed mumbles mixed together, and then busy silence, an occasional cough or belch. Crouched on the running board of the truck, Ricky clung to the door handle and waited. His legs began to cramp. He tried to think of what was necessary for takeoff. When his mind reached the airplane, his thoughts blanked and he returned to the men inside the hangar. Hoo-wee, sounded a voice. This salsa would make a burrow cry. The other men grunted agreement and whistled low, panting aloud. Ricky stifled a, gi a giggle. Grab your socks. It's showtime, he whispered again. If everything worked, they'd be grabbing more than their socks. Remember, he put the plant in their food to try to make them sick. Get me another beer, shouted the gruff guard who had shot the machine gun. I think the fillings in my teeth are melting. More cans popped open and Ricky heard satisfied guzzling. He waited and hoped, waited and hoped. Finally, one of the men burped. Oof, I think the salsa has melted my guts. I'll finish my beer in the outhouse. You don't like our company? Someone snorted. The rest laughed. Ricky stretched up to peek through the cab windows of the truck. One of the workers stepped out the side door and strode off at a half trot. He angled away from the truck toward an outhouse on the far side of the horse corrals. Ricky had not noticed the small building earlier, but was grateful now for its distant location. Impatiently, he waited. I think it melted my guts, too, growled a voice. If Juan isn't done, I'll throw him out. The second worker ran out the side door and headed for the outhouse, hands gripping his stomach. You'll have to sit on his lap, shouted the gruff guard after the fleeing man. Before the second man reached the outhouse, the shortest guard raced from the shed, running with a stiff-legged gait. His machine gun bobbed up and down as he bounded along. His desperation made him rigid. Ricky felt tension growing inside his stomach as he waited. What if the big guard with the farmer coveralls hadn't eaten any of the food? Maybe he was so fat that the arrow weed had no effect. Come on, Ricky begged silently. Almost at once, his request was answered. Hi-yo, bellowed the last guard. There's fire in my belly. Swearing loudly, the burly ox weaved out of the building. He ran, knock-kneed, swinging his machine gun with one hand, the other hand clamped tightly under his britches. Down by the outhouse, a fight broke out. The second man yanked open the door and hauled the first worker off the seat and shoved him stumbling into some pick prickly pear cactus. The worker bawled with pain even as he struggled to his feet to continue his chore. The third man hopped up and down, howling at the sky, pleading for his turn. The largest guard ambled into the fray like a bulldozer. Open the door and get off, he screamed. My turn. He fired his machine gun into the air to make his point. Hurry. With a grunt, he pulled the other guard off the seat. The two started wrestling in the dirt, throwing punches. The first guard's pants remained down, hobbling his ankles. While the two brawled, one of the workers crept inside and jumped on the valued hole. You lizard, screamed the biggest guard, breaking off the fight. He jerked and pulled on the locked door. Ricky jolted into action. He jumped to the ground and raced for the shop door, his cramped legs tingling. The last thing he saw over his shoulder was two men pushing over the outhouse, occupant and all. Ricky ran directly to the plane and kicked the blocks from under the tires. He tried the door. It was locked. He glanced about frantic. In a far corner sat a small desk. Ricky ran and jerked open the drawers. Nothing. Think, he told himself. Slow down and think. A green metal cabinet hung over the desk. Ricky pulled open a door. On a board lined with nails hung nearly a dozen sets of keys. He rifled through them. Each had a tag on the key ring. DC3, Mojave, Beach, Bell 1, Bell 2, Bell 3, 172. Ricky grabbed the 172 keys. Fingers awkward with haste, he unlocked and opened the Skyhawk door. The rear seat had been removed, and the right passenger's seat was turned to face a big black console and radar screen in the back. That's what they were looking for. Behind the pilot's seat was wedged a large cardboard box. The lettering read baby diapers. Loud swearing and shouts from the distressed men still echoed in the distance. Ricky knew he needed to hurry, yet if he didn't do everything right, he could crash. Did he dare take time to check the gas, oil, tires, brakes, and all the other things outside? 
No, he decided. Worse yet, once the engine started, he wouldn't be able to wait and check oil pressure or magnetos or allow for a warm-up. This was what Dad called a forced shoot. Scrambling in, Ricky closed the door. His fingers were sweating as he fumbled to insert the key. He held his breath. It fitted. Most of the instruments and controls looked similar to the Cessna 150 he trained in. He found the fuel switch and turned it on to on. Carefully, he flipped the master switch and heard the familiar quiet whine. He twisted the control yoke and kicked on the rudder pedals. They seemed to be free. Again, he let his eyes sweep across the instruments. Spotting the fuel mixture control, he pushed it to rich. He snuggled the seatbelt tight. Fuel, ga fuel gauges showed mostly full. What else? Had he forgotten anything? Maybe it would help to prime the engine with fuel. But how much? Too little and it would not start. Too much would flood it. Handshaking, he pushed the prime, prime plunger one full stroke. Wiping his palms on his dirty pants, Ricky looked straight ahead. As soon as he cleared the big shed, he would be visible from the outhouse. There would be no time to taxi down and use the full runway. Takeoff toward the compound would give him the most distance and be into the wind. Even that might not be enough. Well, this was it. Mouth dry as dirt, hands trembling, Ricky turned the ignition to start. <gasps> Cliffhanger! I don't know what's going to happen. I'll see you for chapter 23.